What's up, Hyperfast Agent? On this episode of the show, I sat down with a real estate agent and broker owner who made the transition to running a virtual assistant business that has grown 450% during the pandemic. He helps real estate agents all over make better use of their time. Welcome to the show, Pavel Stepanov. Welcome to the show today, Pavel. How are you doing? Good, Dan. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. I know you're a little in a time crunch, but thanks for uh, finding the time f f for me. Appreciate it. Yeah. Why don't you tell our listeners and viewers a little bit about your background and how you got to where you are today, which is you know helping real estate agents and other business owners uh, use virtual assistance to, to grow their business. <laughs> Sure, of course. Well, um, I mean, I've been in this business for it's my sixth year in this comp uh, running this company. Uh, prior to that, I was actually a real estate agent, real and real estate broker. Prior to that, I was in the legal field. I got my law degree. So at a point, um, I had a point in my career as a real estate agent where I was just overwhelmed with tasks to do, and frankly, there are only twenty four hours in a day, like for everybody. And I was looking for ways to leverage my time so I could actually generate more sales and focus on uh, my clients uh, you know selling homes and basically uh, you know providing for my family but at the same time I was overworked like working uh, you know 18 20 hours a day uh, because you know between scheduling appointments uh, running to meet the clients doing the paperwork running the marketing pretty much was a one-man show and uh, what I what I decided to do at first was hire a virtual assistant to help me generate sales appointments and handle back office stuff. So um, having experienced that myself and then having agents under me who were working in my brokerage, I started, I mean, I saw the, their typical pain points and um, I started to help them um, get the virtual assistance, which basically the business, the business idea was born in. That's where, where we are right, right, right now. Well, I love that. I love I love when there's a problem that someone faces that maybe they don't have a good solution to, like in your case, yeah. all of the time, right? Uh, you found a solution to that problem and then and then found it for others. And I, I think it's really cool when, when someone's able to put that together to create a business like you have. Yeah, thanks. That's what that was the uh, you know the whole idea basically. Again, uh, the idea was born out of necessity. Where I what I saw for my own business, and after speaking with many agents in the in the industry, um, you know I saw that uh, people have the same problem. And the major issue for productive real estate agents that they're overworked, that they actually uh, doing a lot of things by themselves. And again. Part of it because, again, as real estate agents have the mentality that nobody will do it better than me. I don't want to like delegate it to somebody else to do it. Uh, and some of them don't even have an idea or some of them don't even have a basic understanding sometimes that they can actually hire somebody to do it for them. You know, So that's just one of those things. At what point do you think a real estate agent needs to engage you know, the, the services of a virtual assistant or, or I guess consider getting help in general. Consider getting help. Well, the, the thing is, once a, virtu once a real estate agent starts asking the same question from yourself, when do I hire help? That's pretty much the time when you need to hire help. Because if, you are, if your day consists of running around town, showing homes, meeting with potential clients, 
when you get home, instead of spending time with your family, you're actually on a computer doing paperwork, making sure all the documents are, you know, in, t- in place um, when your transactions are being, when you handle your transactions. And uh, at the same time, you also need to market yourself and create marketing stuff. You need to run social media ads. You need to do all kinds of stuff. So when you're at a point where you, when you see that all of this, when basically, let me just backtrack. When, when you are sacrificing time with your family by running your business, it's the time to actually hire some help to, you know, to get you somebody to, to help you with that. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think when you get to that point, you're, you're already like past the point yeah. where you should have done exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. I, I think a lot of agents struggle with this because like, like all humans are, and, and even like publicly traded companies are kind of wired for the short term result. Right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, this takes resources, you know, time and a little bit of money to implement. And, the, you know, the payback comes in a, it's not going to come like week one or month one all the time, right? It's going to be a, a few months when now you have more free time or now your business is growing and you're, maybe you're not even working as much. Um, and I, I think people struggle with that, just that it, they have to put a little bit of uh, resources up front, but then they get the payback later. Mm-hmm. Uh, exactly. Well, I mean, the, the resource, I mean, come to think of this as uh, your time is also a resource. That's an asset. Mm-hmm. And not a lot of people realize that, but your time is valuable. And as a real estate agent, when you're, you should be focusing on income generating activities instead of doing uh, tasks that do not produce any income, but they have to be done. So you need to like figure out where your time is best spent if it's spent on uh tasks that cost ten dollars an hour or on tasks that cost a thousand dollars an hour you should be you basically paying when, when, when you are as a real estate agent you are doing when you're spending like two three hours a day doing tasks that you can hire somebody for 10 bucks bucks an hour you basically working for ten dollars an hour for yourself just come right. to think of it with that kind of a mindset you know so exactly that's why it's best to hire somebody to do those tasks for you know yeah ten dollars an hour uh instead of and you spending time and focusing on more uh income producing activity like meeting with a client negotiating a deal and as a lot of real estate coaches say your uh your time should be spent on uh working with clients uh negotiating contracts and closing deals hey hold that thought Do you want to get 100 tips for free from my best-selling real estate book, The Hyper Local, Hyper Fast Real Estate Agent? If you do, go to hyperfasttips.com and you can download 100 of my best tips today. Again, that's hyperfasttips.com. You can download 100 tips on how to grow your business, get more clients, deliver more value to more people. Go to hyperfasttips.com. Yeah, I, I think I think a really important task for agents to do, you know, as soon as they start getting traction and if they're a new agent, I think it's important to kind of sit down and actually map out how they spend their time. Like, you know, map out the activities like prospecting, calling, contracts, showings, you know, con- contract, like map all that out and then figure out. You know, your overall, like your, your income and how many hours you work and so how much, you know, your, your time is worth and then figure out all of the things that are worth less than that or that you don't like doing and, and then, you know, find a, find a guy like you to, to <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know. exactly. And then, and uh, I think also the easiest way to do it is to sit down, uh, make a piece of like on a piece of paper to make it two columns. You on one column, you write down all the tasks that have to be completed throughout the day in order for you to run your business. Just start with everything. Just throw everything, whatever comes to your mind. Then on the second column, you transfer the tasks that can be done by somebody else. And they have to be done, but they can be done by somebody else. And that's gonna be a real eye opening for somebody who's just new to the business and figure out, okay, listen, like I need to create uh, social media, uh, you know, postings. Can it be done by somebody else? Yes, it can be. I need to go to my email and go through the uh, you know, database. Can it be done by somebody else? Yes, of course. Let's say I'm a real estate broker and I need to do recruiting. Okay, let's see. Can I go to the MLS and pull the number of agents that I need to speak with or the people that I would like to have a coffee conversations? 
can can it be done by somebody else yes of course it can be you know so just all of those tasks you know just lay out the mapping out is going to be an eye opening for somebody who's just starting yeah so how does your company virtue desk how do you help people do this like what's the you know someone called you up today and is like you know yeah. Pavel, i need help what's what, what how's, well how does um, it work? first of all yeah, first of all, I mean, we figure out as far as uh, where exactly you need help, as far as, you know, it's going to be a transaction coordinator, it's going to be a marketing assistant, executive assistant, video editor or inside sales agent, somebody will be making phone calls, or if it's a more of a customer service rep, or, you know, let's say you run a company, you need somebody to answer your phone calls, answer emails, uh, all of that. And then um, we provide you with... Uh, list of several virtual assistants that can potentially be working for you so you get to sit down and interview and decide which person you can hire uh once it happens uh you you know we do a meeting meet and greet we do formal onboarding and you get to work with not only with that person but also with our company and uh the account managers or coaches who will be monitoring who will be overseeing the success of your virtual assistant they were going to be working with you make sure your virtual assistant actually works produces to the results that you need uh there's also subject matter experts let's say you using a crm that uh your uh va is not familiar with we can schedule a subject matter expert who will go over uh you know who schedule time outside of work hours with this, with this va and teach them how to use it um so all of that plus the you know you get the workforce manager who's actually making sure your va logs in on time that there's no absences there's no uh you know tardiness or anything like that so all of that is basically what we do we've done we're not just only had hunter agency who's going to give you a person and that's it washing off our hands that's not how we operate we work together with you with your va to make sure that the person is actually working and uh your business prospers what is what does it usually cost to get started for someone um it usually costs uh, i mean the average about 10 11 dollars an hour wow and what yeah what um what kind of return do they usually get like how, how long does it take to recoup that investment in terms of time that they save or how the business grows Do you have any metrics on that well we don't have a specific metrics on that but from our experience it's actually best to see the re to you know measure out about 30 to 60 days okay. uh, so, you, so the person can be onboarded right. uh, and fully operational uh, that's like with any employee, like any, let's say you hire somebody in your office, it's just pretty much the same pr process where you got to like observe for the first 30 to 60 days and see how the person works. And if this person works out, then great. And if not, then you can just replace. So we do have a 90 day agreement uh with all of our customers who just started out they sign a 90 day thing it's not a year not a six months or anything 90 days but pretty much it gives you an idea like whether you know how we can all work together because whether we want to work with you you want to work with us it's like a you know i call it um a, a dating process where we basically you know uh figuring out how we can click if we can work together same thing uh goes for your virtual assistant and that's a good way to measure successes to see uh, like 30 day uh, to 60 days. What's been the biggest challenge for you in getting real estate agents to adopt the systems and, and trust the process and let other people do some of the work? Well, before COVID, that was basically the selling the idea that work from home and remote workers are, are you know something that you can actually have in your business you don't have to have somebody in the office because a lot of people that came from the mindset that look i need to have somebody in the office that i can come and talk to i can touch um after COVID, uh pretty much everybody was working remotely so that wasn't big of a challenge by then but uh so it's just again the mindset of a real estate agent and like again uh the pandemic lockdowns kind of changed the uh, the playing field for everybody, I guess, and a lot of people adjusted. I guess a lot of people really adjusted, like big companies did too, you know, so. Hey, hold that thought for a minute. Do you want to take your real estate business to the next level? If you do, there's no reason to go it alone. 
Learn from people who've been where you want to go. Carrie and I have sold billions of dollars in real estate. We've netted over seven figures for seven years in a row now. And we want to see if you would be a good fit to work for us. We don't work with a lot of people, but we want to give you a chance to get on a free strategy call to see if we can help you get your business to the next level. Go to hyperfastcoach.com and apply for your discovery session today. Again, that's hyperfastcoach.com. What's your business done since since the pandemic? How has that affected what you do? Well, we have grown uh, 450% basically. Wow. Uh, yeah, and um, because again, a lot of people embrace the idea of working from home and we've been uh, set up to work from home from the beginning. I mean, we do have an office here in Bellevue, Washington. Uh, all of our virtual assistants are in the Philippines. They're all working from home. We do have a little office there for the administrative staff, but uh, all of the actual virtual assistants, they work from home. They work on our platform that we've built and that allows us to, uh, you know, time track them, allows us to see screenshots and everything. So, and once the pandemic started, a lot of, uh, as I don't know if you know, but the Philippines has a major hub for uh, outsourcing. All Fortune 500 companies have call centers there. So when the pandemic happened, all of the a lot of call centers closed down because employees couldn't come to work. So we hired a lot of those talent from people who came from Bank of America, from Amex, from Comcast, Xfinity, uh, to come to work for us from home. We basically provided a lot of uh, jobs to people in this industry and scooped up the talents. So I guess that was a stepping stone for us because we hired a lot of uh, qualified candidates to, so you know, to help grow. 450% growth is massive. Uh, anytime you grow like that, I'm sure there are challenges. What challenges did you have in scaling and getting the right people and, you know, making the best use of your time to, you know, as you grew to help that many more agents? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the challenges were basically, again, uh, we had an influx of, because we've, we've, we've picked up the talent. Since we picked up the talent, we also picked up the clients because the clients, uh, you know, needed, um, you know, more virtual assistance. So, so we've increased the sales staff. We've increased the operational staff uh, workforce. Uh, we had challenges on a technology, on the technology part because we've developed our own technology for the monitoring and, uh, you know, the time tracking. So we needed to increase the bandwidth. So all of that, uh, basically, yeah, it was just working moments, but, um, we've, you know, we, we've hired, uh, technical staff also as well, like it people to work on that. So, um, again, um, we just challenges, we, we see them every day and, you know, just have to work th with them. So Pavel, this has been, uh, an amazing interview. I loved hearing your story of how you were a real estate agent and broker and then solved this problem for yourself and others before expanding it. So uh, congrats to you on that. Before we sign Thanks, off, man. I always like to end with a hyper fast round. Are you ready for some rapid fire questions? Sure. Let's do it. All right. What's your biggest piece of advice to a new real estate agent? Build your database. Your biggest database is actually in your cell phone. Go to your cell phone, reach out to those people. What is the most common mistake that you see experienced real estate agents making? Their ego kills the deal. Mm. Don't, don't let it do it. Don't let it head, hit you in the head. If you could wave a magic wand and make real estate agents you know, all do one thing better, what would it be? Answer the phone call. <laughs> Answer your phone respond be responsive what's been your biggest challenge in business and how'd you overcome it it's not going to be an easy answer because um you know basically talent uh, finding the right talent that's the biggest challenge and you know you do it by uh you know the trial and error so don't be afraid to make mistakes those who don't uh, make mistakes they don't, they don't do anything last question where do you see yourself 10 years from now I'm more of a like a ha halftime coach in an essence where I'm I you know I run the the quarter I look at this I, I adjust you know so I don't plan that way like ten years out I okay. I actually plan like by quarters. Amazing. Well, thank you so mm -hmm. much for uh, being on the show today. If people uh, out there listening want to want to connect with you or learn how they can use your services, how should they do that? 
Sure, they can just go to uh, virtue, uh, myvirtuedesk.com. It's myvirtue, V-I-R-T-U-D-E-S-K.com. So it's myvirtuedesk.com. They can just simply Google Virtuedesk, uh, V-R-T-U-D-E-S-K. V I R T U D E S K Virtue Desk, or they can just find me on uh, any social media platforms. Uh, my name is Pavel Stepanov. They can just go in, you know, and connect. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for being on the show today, Pavel, and to thank all of our you. listeners and viewers. Thank you for tuning in. Please share this episode with other people that you think would benefit from hearing. And we will see you next time. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure and go to hyperfastagent.com to learn about upcoming in-person and online events. And don't forget to share this show with someone that you think could benefit from hearing it. And make sure you subscribe on YouTube or anywhere that you can find podcasts. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Hyper Fat Show. Subscribe to us if you want to make sure you get the latest and greatest Hyper Fat Shows. And remember, we love reviews. Reviews help us bring better and better guests and improve our shows. So give us the good, the bad, and the ugly. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we will see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you want to see more, click right here. And if you want 100 real estate tips from my best-selling book, click right here to download them instantly. And if you're new to this channel, click below to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out. And leave some comments about what you think on the videos. 